Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so a couple months ago now, I bought an $18 tin of pipe tobacco, and now today, I'm gonna be smoking it, which I will admit, I am certainly more excited to do than not, for two main reasons. The first reason is simply because I have heard some pretty good things about this pipe tobacco right here. The Bell's Three Nuns Pipe Tobacco, which is currently produced in Denmark by the Mac Baron Tobacco Company. The second reason why I am so excited to try this stuff right here is a little bit more of a funny one, I will admit. And it's just simply because I think the name of this pipe tobacco is absolutely hilarious. I think Three Nuns is a really funny name for any product in all honesty and it can be used in a variety of different phrasings and different jokes and they're all more funny than not in my personal opinion or at least they start off sounding pretty funny three nuns walk into a bar sounds like the beginning of a pretty funny joke as said though this name can be used in pretty amusing ways as long as you phrase it correctly and so as such, I certainly am very excited to find out just how good or just how bad three nuns actually taste in today's video. That is for sure. <laughs> oh man, the Pope ain't ever letting me into the Vatican after that joke, I ain't gonna lie. The Pope ain't ever letting me into the Vatican. I think whoever decided to name this brand, this name, knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew exactly what kinds of jokes were gonna be made. And I am making those jokes in today's video, that is for sure. As I'm sure is obvious, I certainly am more excited than not to try the Bell's Three Nuns Pipe Tobacco for the first time in today's video. And of course, I certainly am quite excited to let you guys know what I think of it as well. But what is the Bell's Three Nuns Pipe Tobacco? Well. It is a pretty notable pipe tobacco nameplate, to say the least, as it has been on the market more consistently than not for over a hundred years now, which is pretty wild if I do say so myself. However, the length of time that this has been on the market is not the only reason why it's so notable. Another reason is simply because some notable people have smoked and supposedly enjoyed this stuff right here more so than not. Those people include, but are not limited to, C.S. Lewis, the author of The Chronicles of Narnia, which is a pretty good book series if I do say so myself, along with J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of The Lord of the Rings which is a pretty good book series that I haven't finished yet, but I probably should in all honesty. So yeah, this is pretty notable, not only because it's been around for so long, but also because some pretty notable people have smoked this stuff right here. However, as with any product that has been on the market for over 100 years, eventually some changes have to happen. And a couple decades ago, that's exactly what happened to the Bell's Three Nuns. And so as such, as much as I hate to say this, the Three Nuns that I have in my hand today is not the same Three Nuns that J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were smoking back in the mid-1900s. However, nonetheless, I have still heard some very, very, very good things about the modern variety of Three Nuns pipe tobacco. Bell's Three Nuns used to be, though, a Virginia Perroque blend of pipe tobacco. A couple decades ago, as said, though, that changed. And since that point, the Bell's Three Nuns has been a Virginia Burley blend of pipe tobacco that contains a mixture of Virginia, Dark Fired Kentucky, and Burley tobaccos, which supposedly make the Three Nuns taste pretty good, that is for sure. And even though this stuff right here is not the original blend of Three Nuns, I have still heard much better things than not 
about this stuff, and so as such, I certainly am quite excited to try it for the first time in today's video, that is for sure. But what are my expectations for the Bell's Three Nuns, and how do I think Three Nuns are actually going to taste? Well, taste-wise, I am expecting this pipe tobacco right here to probably have a mildly sweet, grassy, almost hay-like taste coming from the Virginia tobacco, maybe with some sort of fruity, citrusy sort of taste in there as well kind of thing. That's kind of what I'm expecting taste-wise from the Virginia in the Three Nuns uh, pipe tobacco. However, there's also that dark fired Kentucky and Burley in there as well. And so as such, I am also expecting a sort of, I'd have to say, slightly spicy, smoky, maybe almost nutty taste as well kind of thing. I'd have to say that's more so than not what I'm expecting taste-wise from this pipe tobacco right here. And that's what I've heard this pipe tobacco tastes like online. And so as such, I am pretty confident in that expectation, but hey, I very well could be wrong. But that taste certainly does sound a lot better than not to me, so, well, of course, I certainly am quite excited to try this stuff right here. Roughness to smoothness-wise, I am expecting this stuff right here to be a little bit rougher than not on the back of my throat, even though I'm not going to be inhaling in today's video. I'm still expecting it to be a little bit rougher than not just due to that old dark fired or just dark fired Kentucky, I do suppose is the right way of putting it. I am expecting tongue bite wise to not get a terrible amount of tongue bite, but also not too little either kind of thing. I'm thinking the burly in the blend is really going to make the tongue bite a lot more mild as Virginia blends are generally what gives you the most tongue bite. Uh, and since this has burly in it, I'm expecting that to mild out the tongue bite quite a bit, but not completely. And so as such, I am still expecting a little bit of tongue bite and strength wise, I am expecting this pipe tobacco right here to not kick my butt, but also not be too light by any means. I'm expecting it to be just about perfect at around about a six or seven out of 10 on my strength scale, with uh, one being the absolute most light, doesn't do anything to me kind of thing, and 10 being the absolute strongest, kicks my ass after one hit. So yeah, I'm expecting this to be just about a uh, six or a seven out of 10 if I had to guess. Definitely a little bit stronger than not. But those are my expectations for, well, the Bell's Three Nuns Pipe Tobacco. And so as such, I do suppose now I should probably go ahead and hop into the packaging of this pipe tobacco. After I go over the packaging, I'm gonna go ahead and get the tin all cracked open. I'm gonna go ahead and see what the pipe tobacco smells like, what it looks like, what the quality of it is like, what the moisture level is like, everything like that kind of thing. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the Bell's Three Nuns pipe tobacco in my Missouri Meerschaum corn cob pipe. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get to smoking, which of course I certainly am more excited to do than not. But first off, as said, we gotta cover the packaging, which from what I know at least is pretty much the same packaging that this blend has been using for just about the last hundred years now. I did see one or two vintage tins of uh, Three Nuns online, and the design looked pretty much exactly the same, other than some very, very, very minor details, like the uh, made uh, by uh, made in Denmark by the Mac Baron Tobacco Company uh, text right here and everything like that kind of thing like that wasn't on those older tins, just simply because Mac Baron only started producing the Three Nuns uh, pipe tobacco in the early uh, 2010s, I wanna say, if I'm remembering correctly. However, more so than not, this design has remained mostly unchanged for the for, for the uh, for the variety for the majority of this blend's existence, and I think it has aged really, really, really well. It's not, I would have to say, a classy or luxury look, but it is a really nice, simplistic. It's highly, not, not, not highly stylized, I guess. It's a really nice, simplistic, stylized, almost minimalist look that has aged amazingly in my personal opinion. And overall, more so than not, I am a much bigger fan of this design than not. 
We can see this label right here is all on a very nice gold tin, as we can see kind of thing. Pretty nice if I do say so myself. But what is on the label itself? We, what we can see, get my word just a little bit jumbled up. What we can see, the background for this label is very much just a very, very, very dark, pure black, I definitely have to say with a red band going all the way around the outer edge of the label, but not quite all the way to the outer edge as there is still a little bit of black, bef uh, not before, after, before, after, below, after the red ribbon right here kind of thing, the red sort of band right here stretching all the way around. There is a little bit of black after that as well kind of thing. So it doesn't quite all the way go to the edge, but it gets close kind of thing. It gets close. And we can see some of the details on the black background are made of that same red as well, but not all of them. Starting off with the text up here though, we can see it's all in red and it just says Bells right there, which I assume was the original producer of the Three Nuns Pipe Tobacco, but I will admit I don't know that for sure. Under the Bells text right here, which is in a pretty, uh, more basic than not font, I definitely have to say. We can see a very nicely stylized text that says three nuns right there. Just says three nuns, very nicely stylized, all in white. No drop shadow, no shading, nothing like that kind of thing. Very, very, very nice, simplistic look, yet still at the same time, quite stylized logo, which I think looks a lot better than not. Then under this text right here, we can just see it just says tobacco right there and pretty much the same font and pretty much the same font that we saw right here with the Bell's text. And then under the tobacco text right here, which is all in white, we can just see in apostrophes, is that right? In, in quotations, not apostrophes. Is it a apostrophe or is it a quotation? I think both are right. Because this is apostrophe. No, apostrophe is the, is the an apostrophe is, is that, right? So this is quotation. So in quotes, it just says, none nicer, which is a pun in of itself because this is the three nuns. And so, of course, there's none nicer, right? I mean, like, there's literally a pun on this packaging. I mean, like, how much better can you get than that kind of thing? They literally put a pun on the packaging. I love that. I love that kind of thing. And so, well, maybe there is none nicer than three nuns, that is for sure. Maybe there is. Pretty amusing. I love that there's actually a pun on the front of the packaging kind of thing. It really does show that whoever first created this uh, this variety really did have a sense of humor, and that is something I do appreciate, that is for sure. Under all of this stuff right here, we can just see it says down here in red, pipe tobacco. And then under that in white, it just says made in Denmark by the Mac Baron Tobacco Company. And that's pretty much all there is to the front of the packaging. Pretty simplistic packaging, if I do say so myself. Almost minimalist, I definitely have to say. But it's a very nice, not classy, not luxury, but timeless look in my personal opinion. And I really do like the stylization of the text right here, which contrasts really well with the, uh, not blandness, but just sort of normality of the text right here kind of thing. It, it contrasts really well and really does a good job of emphasizing that this is actually the three nuns pipe tobacco. And from a distance, I definitely do think that this is much more distinct than not. If you know what this pipe tobacco looks like, you're going to be able to spot it from a distance just because the three nuns text is so bold on that black background, along with the stylization of it as well. Although I will admit, if you don't know what this pipe tobacco is, it might be a little bit hard to tell what it is from a distance. But when you're buying pipe tobacco, you're not really looking at it behind the counter like with cigarettes. You're not really trying to like look over the counter like you are with cigarettes and everything like that kind of thing. You're probably able to pick it up and take a look at it and everything like that kind of thing. And so as such, being distinct from a distance is not nearly as big of a deal with pipe tobacco as it is with cigarettes. And I think this stuff has a really nice look up close to say the least. And I do like the nicely stylized look of this and the very nicely timeless design, the very nicely, the very nice timeless design of this, uh, well, packaging, that is for sure. Moving on from the front of the packaging, though, which I am a bigger fan of than not, I do really like the pun on the front of the packaging as well, I will admit. Without further ado, though, let's go and move on from the front of the packaging to the back of the packaging right here. We can see the back of the packaging is pretty much just all informational. It's just a sticker stuck on the back of the tin. And we can just see it just says at the top right there in black, sale only allowed in the United States. Then it goes on to say Prop 65, California, BS, warning, all that sort of fun stuff and everything like that. Oh, causes birth defects. Oh, I don't care, California. I'm going to smoke it anyway. Be quiet, California. Keep your stuff to yourself, California. That's what I'm saying. 
why is California's Prop 65 stuff on my stuff? Well, I know it's just because they make one, one, one design for the entire United States market. California is a significant part of that market. So, of course, they've got to abide by that. But still, still, California, you ain't fun, you know what I'm saying? You ain't fun. I don't like California. Not a fan. Not a fan, to say the least. Could be worse, though. There could be New Jersey. No offense if you live from New Jersey. I don't like New Jersey. Under the uh, Prop 65 warning right here, though, we can just see it just says, Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical in that same sort of almost uh, gray, whited-out text, which they've done a really good job at, at just trying to do their, their very best job at uh, making it where, oh, yeah, this is just really easy to skip over kind of thing. They've done a really good job of doing that, that is for sure. Under this text right here in black, we can just see it just says, Made in Denmark by the Mac Baron Tobacco Company, www.macbaron.com. Imported by the Suitliff Tobacco Company, Richmond, Virginia, 23224. And then it just says, Tax Class L, TPVA 1500, VA T1302, I think got cut off just a little bit right there. I'm not sure if it's a two, but I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, that's pretty much just informational who it was uh, made by and who it was imported by. We can see the barcode under this and we can see the date that this stuff was made. We can see it was made in September of 2022. And then there's some numbers under that. It just reads uh, 092226212182. one I don't know the exact date this stuff was made, but this stuff is uh, over a year, uh, it is over a year old now as of the recording of this video. Actually approaching uh, about, as of the recording of this video, it's actually approaching about a year and a half old. Yeah, this is a, uh, oh, I'm looking forward to seeing how it's aged after, after a year and a half, that is for sure. But you know, made September of 2022. I do really appreciate that they put that on the back of the tin, that is for sure. Under all of this right here, we can just see it just says, three nuns, 1.75 ounces. And then under that, it just has a descriptor of what this uh, pipe tobacco is like. It just says, carefully selected Virginia is the wrapper leaf on this spur tobacco. The inlay origins, uh, origins from four continents and the center of each um, cake, I'm not sure what it's supposed to say. It's kind of smudged out a little bit, is dark fired Kentucky and Burley. So these are um, almost coin tobaccos from what I know. So the innards of the coin are dark fired in Kentucky and then the outers are Virginia. Uh, and then it just uh, goes on to say that Three Nuns is dominated by the Virginia tobaccos and is well balanced by the Burley tobacco. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the packaging. Overall, not a bad look. Quality wise, uh, it's uh, better than not kind of thing. This is pretty off, excuse me, this is pretty off center if I do say so myself, but it's also the back, so who really cares? But this is still a little bit off center, which is a little bit of a complaint on my behalf, but it is what it is kind of thing. It's not that big a deal, you know what I'm saying? But overall, more so than not, I do like the front of this packaging and the back is pretty much just informational, so there's really not much to say, but I do really like the front of this packaging and I really do think it's a very nice, timeless design that is still very nicely stylized. And I really do like that there's a pun on the front of the packaging, that is for sure. And I certainly do, oh wait, pun, none. <laughs> I certainly do find none puns to be pretty funny, that is for sure. Yeah, they had a sense of humor. Without further ado though, I do suppose I should now go ahead and try to get this tin of pipe tobacco that I paid $18 for all opened up. And I should probably go ahead and see how this stuff looks, how it smells, what the moisture of it is like, what the blend of it is like, and everything like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get my uh, check pipe tool that I have right here. And let's go ahead and try to crack this stuff open just a little bit more so than not. I think I might actually need to use my little spoon I got right here, my little, uh, my little Coke spoon. <laughs> it's not a Coke spoon, YouTube. It's not, I made that. that was, that was a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke, YouTube. It's not, it's not that. It's not that, but there's a bug right in front of me. I just shoved it off the table, but kind of, kind of, kind of looks like one. Just a little bit, maybe, maybe. I don't know. There we go. Got it to pop open just a little bit better than not. Let's see if I can just crack it open the rest of the way. Oh, cracked open really easily. I certainly cannot complain before I spoil it for myself. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put this back the way it was kind of thing. And now I'm going to go ahead and get, ooh, right off the bat. I'm just able to smell this a little bit. Let's go and get this all opened up. And there we go. That is what it looks like the moment you open the tin. Let's go ahead and put this down on the table. And now let's go ahead and get this paper all cracked back. 
Oh, the smell that is greeting me right off the bat is a nice one to say the least. I do like the smell that is greeting me, I ain't gonna lie. We can see there's some tobacco on top of the uh, paper insert right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this paper insert out though. And it is, came out more easily than not. It did rip a little bit, no, it didn't rip a little bit, but it did come out more easily than not. The presentation is not like the best with this kind of thing. It's very much just jumbled in there kind of thing. But I mean, like I can't complain kind of thing. I can't complain as long as it's a good smoke and tobacco. I uh, will certainly have no complaints on my behalf. That is for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and shove this piece of paper in my backpack so it doesn't fly away or anything like that kind of thing. Cannot be littering after all. And now that I have shoved that piece of paper in my backpack, let's go ahead and just take a strong whiff of this type pipe tobacco right here. And the smell I'm getting right off the bat <clears throat> is oddly familiar it smells a lot like a um roll your own tobacco i tried recently it smells a lot like the uh peter stockaby amsterdam shag and i would assume that's due to the peter stockaby amsterdam shag mainly being a blend of um, dark fired kentucky and virginia and this is well a dark fired kentucky and virginia or virginia and dark fired kentucky blend of tobacco so it's really not all that surprising i do suppose that it tastes that they uh, taste that they uh smell more similar than not yeah the smell i'm getting is very much a sweet citrusy slightly spicy smell kind of thing definitely more mild than not not like the heaviest smell uh definitely not like the heaviest smell ever by any means kind of thing definitely not as heavy as a smell as something like a latakia blend that is for sure or an english or a balkan blend this is more on the level of a of a Virginia blend kind of thing, which makes sense because the, the main tobacco in this is is the Virginia after all. But the Virginia doesn't it, it does it does dominate the smell, I definitely have to say. The main smell is very much the sort of uh almost hay-like citrusy sweet Virginia. But then there is a very nice, almost spicy smokiness in there as well, kind of thing. A very nice smell to say the least. What do the uh what does the tobacco actually look like though? Well, Let's just go ahead and get one or two of these coins all out. And let's go ahead and just take a look at uh, what it looks like kind of thing. I'm gonna actually, I'm not gonna take a look at this one. I'm gonna take a look at this one instead because this one's just a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer looking. So we can see there's a really dark area on the, oh, and these are actually two coins stuck together. There we go. There we go. So now I've got that. So there's a really dark area in the center right there. And I assume that that is the burly and, um, dark fired Kentucky if I had to guess and then the area around that center is a much lighter tobacco that I would assume is probably the Virginia if I had to guess looks pretty good as a whole kind of thing looks pretty good as a whole definitely um not like the best looking tobacco in the world that kind of thing it's not the most attractive but as long as it smokes good kind of thing and as long as it tastes good I ain't got no beef with it kind of thing I don't really care in all honesty but yeah no Looks pretty good in my personal opinion. Just black in the center, sort of lighter going around. So you can definitely tell what they said on the back of the uh, packaging was true. The center is indeed that sort of Kentucky, I definitely have to say, with the outer being the Virginia. The moisture level of this is, uh, I'd have to say though, just cracking it just like that kind of thing. It's very, this stuff is surprisingly dry. I was expecting it to be a little bit more moist, just kind of digging into the pack just real quick kind of thing, just, just kind of digging in. Is the stuff on the bottom layer a little bit more moist? No, it's all about the same. This stuff's pretty dry. I don't know if it's meant to be this dry. I assume it probably is. But you know, right out of the pack, this stuff seems to be, um, I'd have to guess, about the perfect moisture. Maybe... With how it's crumbling in my hand, I'd have to say this stuff is probably about the perfect moisture. I would have to say this stuff is probably about the perfect moisture if I had to guess. But it does still have a, a moistness to it, so there definitely is still some moisture in there. It's not turning into dust in my hands by any means or anything like that kind of thing. But um, yeah, definitely I think, it's, I think it's ready to smoke right out of the tin, which is pretty nice. And that is something I do appreciate, I will admit. But uh, yeah, ready to smoke right out of the tin. Smells fantastic. Looks pretty scrumptious as well kind of thing. Well, certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. I do suppose there's really only one more thing for me to do. And that is to actually go ahead and get my uh, 
Missouri Meerschaum legend right here, all loaded up with some of my uh, Three Nuns pipe tobacco. And then after that, I've got to go ahead and get to smoking, of course. There was one other thing I wanted to say about the, the look of the pipe tobacco, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. So there is some moisture in there, which is good, uh, because you do want some moisture in your pipe tobacco, but not too much. And I feel like the moisture in there, you could probably let this pipe tobacco dry out a little bit more, but I feel like it's going to be just fine to smoke it as it is right now kind of thing. So that's exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. Without further ado, though, I am going to go ahead and start uh, kind of unspinning one of these coins right here, and I'm going to see how much tobacco I actually get from it. I'm thinking I'm probably going to need two or three coins to get enough tobacco to fill this up all the way. Uh, this is completely unsmoked as well. I haven't smoked out of this pipe yet, and I'm looking forward to smoking out of it for the first time, that is for sure. But uh, let's go ahead and kind of just uh, get this kind of all ground up and kind of uh, unspun and everything like that kind of thing and just kind of make it into a, a smokable form kind of thing. I have heard there is like a method you can do with coin tobaccos and, and flake tobaccos and stuff and that's called a, a fold and stuff method. I haven't ever tried that though and I'm not willing to try it for the first time in today's video. I'm just going to stick with what I know for today's video but that's how much uh, tobacco you get from one coin. I'm definitely thinking I'm going to need like two or three coins that is for sure. Definitely not not enough from one coin, that is for sure. Not enough from one coin, which I do suppose makes sense. It's like generally with like a old Orlick Golden Sliced, it's like um, ma the, the vast majority of one flake is what I need to fill up one of my uh, Missouri Meerschaum Legends. Although I do, be, uh, I do be stuffing them pretty full and stuff like that kind of thing. But you know, this stuff, uh, it comes apart pretty easily. Uh, it doesn't really stick together um, super hard or anything like that kind of thing. Definitely easier to come apart than some other tobaccos I have had to mess with uh, taken apart before. So I really cannot complain, that is for sure. There's also some just sort of ribbons just kind of lying around in the tin as well. It's not all coins. There's just some normal ribbon uh, tobacco as well kind of thing that just kind of come off as like strands. It's like loose strand ribbon or something like that kind of thing. It's definitely not like the prettiest, but... I think it does the job. I don't see any issue with it kind of thing. I think I'm just going to get a little bit more. Worst case scenario, I don't need all of this and I can just throw it back in the tin. So there we go. That's how much I have in the lid of my tin right now. I'm going to go ahead and try to start getting it all in my pipe now. Start filling up my pipe. There we go. Got my first layer all done. Let's go and do another one now. I think I'm just going to put a little bit more on top. And there we go. It's not quite filled up all the way, but I think that will do. You know what I'm saying? I think that will do. I dropped some on the table, so I'm just wiping that on the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and pour this rest of the stuff that's in the lid right here back into the tin itself. And now I'm going to go ahead and just fold this paper up just like that. Yeah, this stuff does smell pretty good, though. It's uh, surprisingly mild smelling, though. I'm wondering if the taste is going to be mild just like the smell. Curious. Curious to find out. Let's just go ahead and just close that on back up. There we go. Just like that. And now, I do suppose without further ado, I should probably first off take a sip of water. And now, I do think I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff right here, all it up, and go ahead and find out just how good or just how bad the Bell's Three Nuns pipe tobacco actually is. And I certainly am very excited to find out how Three Nuns actually taste. That is for sure. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get this pipe tobacco right here, all it up, and find out just how good or just how bad it actually is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me.
should have probably tested the airflow before this. It's definitely coming through as... Definitely coming through as a, a little bit too open for my personal preference, but that is what it is kind of thing. It's too late now. Just trying to do the starter lights at the moment. However, the wind is definitely making it a little bit harder than not. It's not even really wind. It's just a very, very, very light breeze. Oh, right off the bat. A little bit of spice in the back of my throat. A little bit of roughness in the back of my throat when I'm trying to light. Alrighty. And I think that should be good enough for a starting light, for a charring light. So let's go ahead and just tamp this stuff down just a little bit more kind of thing. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually try to do my official light now. Oh, man, a piece of ass hit, hit, uh, a, piece of, a piece of ass, a piece of ash hit me in the arm and started burning me just a little bit. And there we go. I've got this all lit up now. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. And the taste right off the bat is definitely more so than not dominated by that uh, sort of spicy uh, Kentucky uh, tobacco, I definitely have to say. But I am also smoking it a little bit hot right now, so I'm sure as I slow down, it'll be a little bit better. right off the bat not bad not bad definitely a little bit rough I haven't smoked pipe in a couple days so it is probably slightly due to that but this pipe tobacco is a little bit rough Oh, wow. I'm gonna go and just tamp this down just a little bit. Whew. A little bit rough. A little bit rough, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Wow. Tiny bit rough. Tiny bit rough, to say the least. I think this is probably going to need another relight. Or just another light. This is gonna be my first relight, technically speaking. There we go. I definitely have to say, the taste is similar yet different to what I was expecting. Right off the bat, at least. I don't want to fully describe the taste right now, um, because I haven't quite let it build up in my mouth uh, yet, and also because uh, I just don't have enough experience trying to just kind of think about what this uh, pipe tobacco actually uh, tastes like quite yet kind of thing. I want to give myself another couple minutes, but the taste right off the bat is very much dominated by that um, dark-fired Kentucky uh, tobacco. And the main taste I'm getting is a sort of uh, smoky spiciness that I definitely have to say. But when I retrohale, I do get a lot more of the Virginia. Yeah, I definitely have to say. When I'm retrohaling, the main taste I get is the Virginia. When I'm inhaling slash exhaling out of my mouth, it's, or not inhaling, I do suppose, just puffing into my mouth, puffing out of my mouth. It's very much that old dark, uh, oh, not old dark fired taste, just dark fired taste. And 
And that Kentucky tobacco taste definitely sits in the back of your throat kind of thing. Even without inhaling, definitely sits in the back of your throat and gives the, the whole smoke some, some sort of a, a spicy taste kind of thing. But then the Virginia comes through when you're retrohaling very, very, very nicely. And once the smoke cools down a little bit, definitely the spice wears off a little bit, that is for sure. Yeah, spice wears off a little bit once, the, once it cools down. Tongue bite wise, I'm getting a little bit, not much though. Not much tongue bite. I was a little bit afraid once it started being a little bit rough in the back of my throat, that I was gonna get a little bit more tongue bite than not. Not getting much though, not at all. Of course, one thing to acknowledge is that I am using a filtered pipe today. I've got a Medico filter in my Missouri Meerschaum. I just don't like getting tobacco in my mouth which is why I'm using a filtered pipe. But I'm sure that is um, having an effect on... What was I about to say? This stuff, also, one other thing to mention, is, is a little bit more strong than not. I, for the last uh, couple times I've smoked pipe off of video, I've been smoking um, Balkan Saseni and Lane 1Q. Um... And both of those are definitely lighter pipe tobaccos than not that, frankly put, barely get me buzzed. I'm feeling pretty good right now already, and I'm, I'm not even like a significant portion through, through, through my bowl yet kind of thing. I certainly can't complain that it is for sure. I certainly can't complain, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I think this is gonna need another relight, though. I'm gonna go and tamp this down. Definitely did not do the greatest job of packing it today, but that is what it is. It does burn to a very nice, fine, uh, white ash, though. I certainly can't complain about that. Oh, man, it's trying to burn me. Of course, the breeze is picking up. That's just how it be, you know what I'm saying? I will admit, this is surprisingly reminiscent of the Peter Stockaby Amsterdam Shag, Roll Your Own Tobacco. Um, different, for sure, different, not exactly the same, but definitely reminiscent, to say the least. Which makes sense because the, the main core ingredients of both are the same thing. The taste is, though, the more I taste, the taste, the flavor, is pretty much more so than not what I was expecting, but slightly different. It comes off a little bit more intense in different ways kind of thing, but the taste as a whole is very much what I was expecting, I definitely have to say. And it's, uh, both tastes are combining very well together, because I've got that Virginia blend taste, the sort of citrusiness, sweet, um, almost fruity, that taste we come, combining with the sort of smoky, spicy taste giving the whole taste as a whole a sort of smoky, dark, dark fruit, citrusy, sweet taste kind of thing. And that's like the main taste right off the bat, right off the mat, uh, right, right off the bat kind of thing. That's like the overall taste that you taste when you're not trying to like analyze every little detail. Really nice taste as a whole. Um, very nice, very nice. I do like the taste. Yeah, yeah, definitely more interesting than not. More interesting than not. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and grab myself a little bit of a screenshot real quick.
Hopefully that will do for a screenshot. We will find out, you know what I'm saying? But now that I've been smoking this tobacco for a little bit, I do think I want to go ahead and start talking about how it actually is. And right off the bat, it's pretty good. Um, is it worth $18 right off the bat? Um, it's not bad for $18. I do think you could probably get a cheaper pipe tobacco that tastes similar for less. But for 18 bucks, it's not bad. I don't feel like I wasted my money by any means. And I'm going to talk about the taste last because I'm still really analyzing it just a little bit and everything like that kind of thing. And now that I've started smoking it a little bit cooler, now that some ash is built up in the top, the taste has changed a little bit kind of thing. There's definitely some dynamicness to the tobacco, which is really nice, but I'm not going to talk in specific about what it's like right now. Roughness is smoothness wise. This tobacco is very much a little bit rougher than not kind of thing. It's not super smooth by any means. Um, but once it cools off, once you start smoking it a little bit slower kind of thing, once the tobacco gets a little bit cooler and whatnot kind of thing, it definitely does get a lot more smooth than not. But when you're first lighting the tobacco and when you're smoking it a little bit warm kind of thing, it's definitely much more uh, rough than not kind of thing, but not super rough by any means, not the roughest tobacco I've ever had. And you can definitely tell that the burly in there more than likely milds it out just a little bit kind of thing, but not to a significant extent. You know, I'd have to say roughness to smoothness wise, definitely a little bit rougher than not overall, but a little bit smooth as well kind of thing. Depends on how you're hitting it. At around about a 6 out of 10, with 1 being the smoothest and 10 being the roughest. This is about a, like a 6 out of 10 kind of thing. Smoother than not, in my opinion, for a pipe tobacco. Definitely smoother than some other pipe tobaccos I've had previously. But it's by no means the smoothest pipe tobacco I've ever had. I'd have to say, tongue bite wise, tongue bite wise, at the very beginning when you're first lighting it, there's a little bit of tongue bite, not much. And right now I'm getting pretty much almost no tongue bite, which is really nice. And I'm, I'm pretty much unable to, uh, the, with, with stuff with um, like added flavorings as well, um, I've noticed that there's a little bit of a different mouthfeel and stuff. And with this, I'm really not getting any of that. I'm really not getting any of that sort of added casing or, or maybe not casing, topping, topping, added topping or something like that. I'm sure these are cased in, to some extent, probably they're sugar added and stuff like that kind of thing, but I'm not able to taste any significant taste kind of thing. And I'm not feeling a mouthfeel like there's a topping or something like that kind of thing. And so I don't believe there is. But overall, as long as you're smoking it slowly, there's pretty much no tongue bite. And even when you're smoking it a little bit hot, a little bit fast, there's still very little tongue bite to worry about. This is a pretty easy tobacco to smoke as a whole, but it can still be more rough than not when you're first lighting it, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. And I'd have to say, nicotine-wise, this stuff is a little bit stronger than not. Definitely a little bit stronger than not, that is for sure. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm feeling very relaxed right now. It's definitely, when compared to some of the other tobaccos I've smoked recently, kicking my butt just a little bit kind of thing. Not su to a super large extent by any means. It's, 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 cigarettes, uh, they still kick my butt more. But um, for a pipe tobacco, this is definitely a little bit stronger than not, I definitely have to say. And uh, I'd have to say it's, it's right around a, a 6 or a 7 out of 10, as I was kind of predicting strength-wise. It's not really enough to uh, get me too buzzed, but uh, just enough to give me a, a perfect buzz, I definitely have to say. And I have to say this is a very ideal strength for me. It is not too heavy, not too light. But if you are very much a nicotine lightweight, it might be a good idea to smoke this stuff a little bit slower than not. But I think this has gone out has. I'm going to go ahead and I do think have a little bit of sip of water real quick. Do a little bit of a palate refresher. I 
And now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, I should probably stand up for a minute because actually my legs are starting to hurt just a little bit, actually. Oh, man. There we go. That's much better. And now, this bench is great for recording at. It's not the most comfy, though. And now, I do suppose I should go ahead and get this relay once again so I can actually talk about what the taste of the three nuns are actually like. <laughs> It's just such, it's such a good name. I love, it's just, man, the Pope ain't never letting me into the Vatican. Like, I wanted to get a full tour of the catacombs and every, he ain't never giving me a tour of the catacombs, bro. I don't even know who the Pope, who the Pope is right now. Pope Francis? He's been the Pope for a while. I don't know who's the Pope right now. I have no clue. I have no idea. But, either way, after this video, I might very well be banned from the Vatican. We'll find out. We'll find out after this video gets published. <laughs> Let's go and get this lit up once again, though. Uh, excuse me. Definitely right after lighting, of course. A little bit rough, but not super rough by any means kind of thing. Just about what I said it was roughness is movement wise and the taste I'm gonna go ahead and describe it in depth what all the different intricacies are and then I'm gonna describe the overall taste I'm thinking so the Virginia blend the Virginia blend the Virginia tobacco gives the entire blend a really nice sweet citrusy almost fruit like or like a, I'd have to say it's like a mix of like granny smith apple and like green pear I'd have to say sort of fruity taste kind of thing with a little bit of a sort of hay like taste as well not much though not much it's very much mostly that sweet sort of citrusy fruit-like taste kind of thing very much more so than not but there is a sort of maybe not dried hay taste just a sort of slightly grassy undertone to the Virginia tobacco, slightly grassy undertone to it, I definitely have to say. So, you know, the, the Virginia as a whole, the Virginia tobacco as a whole, very much gives the blend a very nice, sweet, citrusy, almost, uh, w uh, it gives it a very nice sweet, citrusy, and grassy taste in that order, I definitely have to say. And the citrusiness is very much like a sort of mixture between a granny smith and a like green pear or something like that kind of thing a little bit sour a little bit sweet very nice if i do say so myself that's very much the taste you get from the virginia tobacco and of course there's more to the taste than just that though but i've got to get this relit once again i'm gonna go ahead and tamp it down just a little bit I'm gonna go and get this relit once again. I'm gonna tamp it down again. Just simply because it went out. I am having a little bit of trouble keeping this, uh, making this stuff stay lit, but I am also talking a lot during this video. And so I'm pretty sure it's probably half that this stuff doesn't wanna stay lit too well. Maybe it is a little bit too moist. Um, and also because, and also because I am talking a decent amount kind of thing. Uh, and of course, when I'm talking, like when I'm smoking pipe and I'm just like listening to music or watching TV or something like that kind of thing, I can keep a bowl lit pretty well kind of thing. One or two relights throughout the entire experience. So the majority of the time, if any at all kind of thing. The majority of the time, there are exceptions. When I'm talking though, it's like relights every couple minutes. And uh, that's the what I'm ha that's what I'm experiencing today, that is for sure. There are some tobaccos which are really good for talking with where they just don't go out kind of thing, but this is not one of them. Oof. And the ash 
gets really, really, really crumbly and likes to fly out of your pipe if you uh, blow too hard through it. So a bunch had just hit me in the face. Thankfully, none went in my eye, though. But I already described what the Virginia taste is like. So now I'm going to go ahead and describe the rest of it. And the rest of it is very much a... Slightly spicy, slightly smoky, undertone, overtone, depending on how fast you're smoking it. It's an undertone if you're smoking it slowly, and the Virginia's come through much more then. It's an overtone if you're smoking it quickly, and that's when the dark-fired Kentucky comes through more, I definitely have to say. And that sort of slightly spicy, smoky taste is definitely from the dark-fired Kentucky. I'm not really tasting any um, of the burly taste in there kind of thing. Technically speaking, I think dark-fired Kentucky is burly, but they just mean normal burly. I'm not really tasting any of that in there. I was thinking there might be a little bit of nuttiness, but... I'm not really tasting any, to be completely honest with y'all. Actually, I don't know if it's just placebo, but that lasted, I do feel like I tasted some. Mm. Okay. There is a little bit of a nutty taste in there. It's an almost sort of... Ah, I figured it out. So, the dark-fired and burly taste is very much a so the dark fire taste is very much a spicy sort of i'd have to say it's sort of a, a spicy sort of smoky taste kind of thing more spicy than smoky for sure and then that burly gives you a, a slightly nutty taste almost like uh cashew maybe like cashew butter or something like that kind of thing maybe like cashew butter and then when everything combines all together you get a very nice mildly sweet fruity Slightly spicy, salty, smoky, cashew, butter-like taste. That's what I'd have to say. Like, almost buttery taste. Nutty butter, butter taste. Yeah. So all of the intricacies combined make for a, I'd have to say with the overtone being the sweetness and then the sort of fruitiness, the citrusiness, the fruitiness. And then after that, there's a sort of spiciness. And then after that, there's a sort of slightly buttery, nutty taste. And then after that, there's a smokiness. And I'd have to say, that's what the taste tastes like as a whole. When all of the intricacies are combined, that's what it tastes like. Tastes pretty dang good if I do say so myself. Tastes pretty dang good if I do say so myself. You like I burp. Well. Do I like this stuff? I do. I do. It has a lot more depth to it than I realized at the beginning of this video, I will admit. I said, um, well, then I realized at the beginning of this video, then I realized at the beginning of the smoking portion of this video. Really nice taste. Really nice taste. And I asked myself at the uh, beginning of the smoking portion of this video, do I think it's worth $18 at the moment? And I said... Yeah, it's, I don't feel like I wasted my money, but I don't know if it's worth $18 kind of thing. And I'd have to say... I'm still more so than not of the same opinion I was before. 
but I do think it's worth more money than not. I don't think it's like a $5 an ounce tobacco by any means kind of thing. I think it's like, I, I'd, I'd pay a solid like 14 bucks for it. I just think almost 20 bucks is too much for it kind of thing. But for that extra four bucks, it's not bad kind of thing. It's not bad by any means kind of thing. This is a good tobacco to say the least. But it's not like a tobacco that if I went to a brick and mortar short shop and it was upcharged up to $30 or something like that kind of thing that I would pay $30 for. No, I like it. It's very much to my preference. It's not that good though, but it is still very good. It's not $30 good though, but it is still very good. Although granted so far, I haven't found a pipe tobacco where I've bought uh, one or two pipe tobaccos for like over $20. Um, but one very recently that I haven't featured on video yet for almost $30. Um, and while I'm willing to do that to try tobacco for the first time, what I mean is, would I buy it again for that price? Would I buy Bell's Three Nuns again for $18? I would, 100%. I would totally buy Three Nuns again for $18. 100%, without a doubt. Would I buy it for $30? No, I wouldn't. It would have to be really, really, really damn good for $30. Um, and it is pretty damn good, but it's not $30 good. Although taxes in every state do depend, and where I bought this was a pretty cheap place. I bought this uh, to pipe tobacco right here at uh, JR's Discount Tobacco Outlet in Selma, North Carolina. And so uh, it is very much a discount tobacco outlet where everything's a little bit cheaper than not, including the pipe tobaccos. Definitely cheaper than most of the brick and mortar shops, shops in my area, that is for sure. And brick and mortar shops near me, this would probably be like 25, almost 30 bucks, unless it was JR's. And uh, if I was gonna buy this again, I don't know if I would go up to 30 for it. Maybe 20. I'd pay like 20 for it, but not 30. Not 30. But saying I wouldn't pay 30 is not a is not a bad thing at all. It's still very good. This stuff is still really good, and I am still enjoying it more so than not. I don't think it's like my favorite pipe tobacco I've tried so far by any means, kind of thing. Um, but the more I smoke it, I will admit the more it's grown. It's it's growing on me. Um, and yeah, this stuff is, is far better than not. I like it. It's good stuff. Um, it's oddly familiar yet different to some other tobaccos I've tried before. Uh, specifically, the Peter Stock of the Amsterdam Shag. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is really good. It's a really good tobacco and so is this one. Yeah. And I really like how the, like the main taste from the Three Nuns tobacco is very much that Virginia taste. The smokiness is very much the undertone. The spicy smokiness is, is very much the undertone as long as you're not puffing too fast, not smoking it too hot. And I really like that because I really like the whole sort of fruity Virginia taste kind of thing. And this lets it shine while still having some other undertones in there. And that's something I really, really, really do like, I will admit. That is something I really do appreciate. And that is something I really do like about this pipe tobacco right here. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Does Three Nuns do three nuns taste good? Yeah, three nuns do taste good. What can I say, you know what I'm saying? What can I say? Three nuns taste pretty good, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Three nuns taste pretty good. Just, just, just to clarify, it's it's not a cannibal joke. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dirty joke. <laughs> I, felt, I just realized I, I probably should clarify that just about an hour into the video and just now clarifying that. Just now clarifying that. It's a dirty joke. It's not a cannibal joke. It's a dirty joke. <laughs> Too funny, you know what I'm saying? Too funny. I think I'm just going to continue puffing away for just a little bit. I think I've said more so than not pretty much everything I want to say. So I'm just going to kind of puff away and chill for a little bit. It tastes as very much as it was. I don't think I have anything else to describe taste-wise. I think I fully described it. It is very nice. It is, I will admit one thing about this is that it is, it doesn't have Latakia in it, but the smokiness of it from the Old Dark Fired is oddly familiar. And this stuff kind of tastes like a, a, a slightly different version of Balkan Saseni, which is like a, a very Latakia light tobacco that has a decent amount of Virginia in it. And this is like, 
surprisingly similar to that. It doesn't have quite like the same floral taste that Balkan Sassani does, but... It's just interesting how similar it is, even though this doesn't have Latakia in it. It's got a completely different type of smoky tobacco in it. But it's just still quite similar nonetheless. It's not sim- I mean, like, I don't think similar is the right way of putting it, because it's not similar. It's familiar. It tastes familiar to that. Not similar. But it's interesting. It's interesting. I do really like the Bell's Three Nuns. It is really good. It is really good stuff. And I would buy it again. I just haven't gone out again, almost. I don't know how much in reality I have left. Burn my nose a little bit on the last one. One other thing to mention <clears throat> about this pipe tobacco right here is uh, what I think it would pair well with. Um, Food-wise, I think this would pair well with uh, either like smoked meats like prosciutto or maybe beef jerky. Uh, but I also think, oddly enough, it would pair pretty well with like a Granny Smith apple. I think this would pair pretty well with either of those. Drink-wise, that's a little bit harder, I will admit. I think maybe like white wine. I don't know. Moscato, or something like that kind of thing. I don't know, maybe, pro probably not, in all honesty. Apple juice, ah, uh, you could. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to drink apple juice with this stuff. Like tea, I think it would depend on the tea. Like English breakfast or Earl Grey, not really, but maybe some sort of more like floral or like fruity tea, I think would probably pair pretty well with this. Coffee, I don't know. I think you, you could pair it with coffee if you wanted to, but I don't know if it'd be the greatest, per se. A really nice hard cider though. A hard cider would pair really well with this stuff. Yeah, if I'm ever looked to, looking to smoke some pipe and some and some and some uh, hard cider at the same time, I think the three nuns might be my go-to. And I do realize that, of course, smoking and drinking at the same time is actually more dangerous than smoking and drinking separately. Um, just wanted to clarify that real quick. I figure I'm probably gonna get a comment about that, so I figure I should probably go and clarify that. Yeah, the drink it, uh, the, 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 well, not drinking alcohol. Uh, and, and smoking at the same time is bad is, is worse for you because uh, the, the alcohol clears off like the mucous membrane in your mouth or something like that kind of thing I can't remember and then it just makes it where it's it makes you more likely to get mouth cancer or something like that kind of thing I don't know it's not something I do super routinely so I'm not worried about it in all honesty but not that I'm worried about it as a whole because I stay smoking anyway I don't care but 
that is something that uh, I have heard people say, and I feel like if I didn't clarify that I knew that, I'm probably going to get a comment about it. I think this is probably just about done though. Yeah. I'm thinking this is dead. We can see it's pretty much pure white ash in there. I'm gonna go and get it all out. Pretty sure there really ain't much left at all. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kinda finagle all of this out and everything like that kind of thing. Throw it all in the ground. And there was a little bit of tobacco left, but really not enough to really go for kind of thing. Yeah, it was pretty much all ash left. There was a, the tiniest bit of tobacco left, but not enough to make for a significant smoke. Not enough to make for a significant smoke. And so yeah, that's pretty much all there is to, uh, well, that is all there is to uh, this smoking session, I will admit has been a lot of fun though i've really enjoyed talking about the uh bells three nuns uh, the 18 dollars pipe tobacco that i bought a couple months ago now uh in today's video i've really enjoyed smoking the three nuns uh pipe tobacco for the first time was there anything else i wanted to talk about besides my uh final thoughts and whatnot talked about what it tastes like roughness tongue bite strength definitely good strength just about perfect for my personal preference i will admit uh, I'd have to say food-wise would go pretty well with like Granny Smith apple or maybe a pear or like smoked meats or something like that kind of thing. And I'd feel like it would pair pretty well with a hard cider. I feel like it would pair, pair pretty well with like a hard cider. Probably go better with the with the apple stuff just due to the Virginia than, um, than the uh, sort of like smoked meats and stuff kind of thing. Um, and would go pretty well with a hard cider, uh, specifically a hard apple cider if I, if I do say so myself. Or just like honestly hot apple cider. I was thinking apple juice. But no, hot apple cider with like some cinnamon in it for some spice. Oh man, actually, that would be amazing. That would be amazing in this thing right here. And I will admit, for the time of year I'm I'm chilling in right now, kind of thing, which is like, a, it's like a November as of the recording of this video. I will admit, for the time of year I'm sitting in right now, it gets a little bit cold at night, kind of thing. You kind of want some hot apple cider and stuff like that, kind of thing. This stuff is a good combo for that. Hot apple cider, hard apple cider, Granny Smith apple, or like pear, I feel like would be pretty good combo with the uh, Bell's Three Nuns, that is for sure. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. So let's go ahead and start talking about my final thoughts. Do I think the Bell's Three Nuns was worth the $18 price tag? Yes, 100%, I do. I didn't initially, I will admit, I didn't initially. Um, however, however, I do think it is worth the price tag now. Uh, just simply because, just simply because, as I continued smoking, I started noticing more depth of taste. That's really all there is to it. Really nice tasting tobacco. Overall, a very nice, sweet, citrusy, fruity, sort of um, almost sour Virginia blend taste, combining really well with a sort of slightly nutty, um, almost uh, salty butter, sort of, uh, I'd have to say, um, burly taste with a little bit of spice and a smokiness taste and smoky taste from the uh, dark fired Kentucky. Really nice taste as a whole. Not super rough. Doesn't bite your tongue super bad or anything like that kind of thing. Pretty easy to smoke as a whole, but did require a couple relights. Uh, that is for sure. But I can chalk that probably half up to me just talking a decent amount in this video. And uh, overall, more so than not, this stuff is some damn good stuff. Worth the $18 for sure. I wouldn't really want to pay $30 for this stuff, though. Depends on taxes in your area, but in my area, $30 for any tobacco product is, is kind of expensive, low-key kind of thing. Um, I don't know if I'd be willing to pay $30 for this, for, for this pipe tobacco right here. However, I'm 100% willing to pay $18. 100% willing to pay $18. I'd even pay $20, $22 bucks for this. Just not willing to quite go as high as $30, I will admit. But you know. I think this, this stuff's worth the $18. And if you guys haven't tried this stuff already and you like Virginia burly sort of like smoky blends and stuff like that kind of thing, or if you enjoy like a Virginia smoky blend, um, I think you guys would enjoy this uh, pipe tobacco right here. I think that's pretty much all I had to say about the Bell's Three Nuns. Overall, more so than not, I have certainly enjoyed this experience as I'm sure is obvious. And I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. And let me tell y'all what, Three Nuns, they taste pretty good, let me tell you. <laughs>
<laughs> it does pretty good. Let me tell y'all what. It does pretty good. But, but, thank you very much for watching this video, guys, where I smoked a pipe tobacco that I bought for $18 a couple months back. If you guys have enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to uh, like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my P.O. Box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. Bien, thank you so much for watching, y'all. Till the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying?